Winning bronze, John Nunes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We brought home a Golden Demon Trophy from Adepticon 2024. And right off the bat, I want to say thank you for your support and watching these videos and giving me the motivation to keep pushing and try my hardest for this year's Golden Demon. If you've missed any of the installments of this series, check them out. They're all still on the channel. Today, we are going to bring this series of building and painting my Golden Demon entry to a close with a look back at Adepticon 2024, along with sharing the final steps I took to get my piece ready for the competition and chat about the Golden Demon event itself. Oh, and I apologize in advance for my voice. In addition to bringing home a Golden Demon, I also brought home a little head cold. Let's start out with the event itself and why I love Adepticon so much. First and foremost, it's to interact with each of you. You see, I spend most of my days down here in my basement with the company of my dog Argus, painting miniatures, recording footage, and talking to the camera. It's great to meet up with fellow painters and friends I only get to see once or twice a year and making new friends each year at the convention. I also make it a point to bring at least one piece for competition each year, whether I think I have any chance of winning or not. It's just feels good to have a little bit of skin in the game, a little extra excitement or buzz, and it's a great icebreaker when meeting other painters and walking around the display cabinets to talk about what you've painted and get some feedback. And speaking of those Golden Demon cases, they really are one of my favorite places of the entire event. I just love to hang around there and see all the inspiration that I draw from the amazing artworks that people have spent hundreds of hours in in preparation for Golden Demon. Which is why I'm sounding like a broken record when I say that you should each enter a painting competition, no matter where you're at on your painting journey. You'll be surprised how much it pushes you to learn and you'll improve as a painter. And at the end, after getting feedback and getting excited about seeing what other painters are doing, you'll walk away with a memorable experience and you'll be excited to continue painting. So a couple of new things that I saw at Adepticon 2024 was it was noticeably bigger than ever. In fact, it feels like it's bursting at the seams a little bit. Every area of the convention seems bustling with people and nerd energy and that lovely scent of nerd body odor. It still doesn't feel so massive as I hear Gen Con is, but along with more people, there was also more booths than ever, more vendors, more unique items that you could buy that I never saw in previous years. And we'll talk about what I brought home in just a little bit. But I wanted to talk about what was new with Golden Demon. They had an online form that made it super easy for you entering a piece and you didn't have to wait in line for hours to get your piece in the case when you came to the competition. Also, for the first time, you got these awesome placards to put your commended or finalist card in and display your pin, which is a great little thing to put on the shelf with your piece. In addition, the same company that makes these, Wicked Brick, also measured each of the Golden Demon winners for a custom case that's going to be mailed to you that you can keep and display your piece on forever. And yes, these are small things, but they're a sign that there are people at Games Workshop that value the Golden Demon competition and are looking for ways to improve and create efficiencies for the show. Scott the Miniature Maniac and I also recorded our annual live episode of Trapped Under Plastic at Adepticon. It was the show of all shows. We had an amazing time. It was the largest audience we've ever had at a live recording. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the Trapped Under Plastic YouTube channel or on every podcast locale. Now, there's always a ton of games being played at Adepticon. I like to travel pretty light, not bring a lot of models with me for gaming, but it's always easy to throw in a Magic Commander deck in your suitcase for our annual Commander Meetup on Saturday night. After this year's Adepticon, there's a short list of games that I'm going to prepare for, paint more of the models, learn the rules, and be ready to play. Those games would be Relic Blade, Necromunda, Mordheim, and of course, 4th edition, Age of Sigmar. So yeah, be prepared to see a bunch of those models being painted on the channel over the course of the next year. Did I say Kill Team? Yeah, I also want to make a couple of cool Kill Team squads. So, it's a lot of games now that I think about it. 
All right, let's talk about the things that I picked up, the swag from the convention. Now, I didn't get a ton this year, but some good stuff I want to share with you. Okay, I got this display figure. It is a signature series Brom miniature and a limited edition one at that. I'm a big nerd for Brom as an artist. I followed all of his stuff back when I was a kid in the 90s, and I just couldn't help but pick this one up from Mindwork Games. They have a wonderful series that focus on different nerdy artists that I love, so I was glad to grab one of these before they were all gone. Next, I had to steal some of the new sets from the Monument Hobbies booth before they all sold out, which they did very quickly. They had this special Adepticon six-color set. Now, don't worry. This will be publicly available that you can get at your local store that carries Monument products as well as on their web store by the end of April, I believe. They also have the two new signature artist lines from Rogue Hobbies. So, yay, Louis. I love these bold colors, as well as Flameon's non-metallic metal gold set. And of course, I'm a sucker for the event exclusive Warhammer models. So I got the Age of Sigmar and the 40K one. We've got a Crute here. Crute are on the horizon. I'm excited to paint them. They are the kind of flesh meets weird aesthetic that I love. And then we have a Cities of Sigmar guy, just in honor of the year of me painting so much Cities of Sigmar, it's always cool to get one more of these. I went to hang out with my friends at the Michigan Toy Soldier booth where I order all my really hard to get hobby stuff and you can check out their link down below and you can get a discount if you wanna shop there. They talked me into trying out this glue by a company called VMS. They have specialized glue for both resin models as well as 3D printed models. Apparently this stuff is the best glue on the planet for working for resins, both that you buy for display models or for 3D printing. I also stopped at the Game Envy booth who make my favorite wet palettes. If you wanna get one of these, you can check out the link down in the video description. And I picked up these things called like corner weights, I don't know exactly, but they're made of copper so your sponge doesn't mold. And they also keep the corners of your palette paper down so they don't curl up on the edges. Kind of a nice little double duty thing. Also at Adepticon, there was an unveiling of a new paint range. It's called Adam Smart Paints by Big Child Creatives. Now I hadn't heard much about these, only a whisper that they were going to be manufactured. And it was the first time I got to see them. I got to mess around with a model at their booth, just kind of paint it a while and see what I thought of the paints. And I actually used them a little bit later in the convention, but they were really interesting and the price wasn't too bad. So I thought I'd give them a deeper dive here back at the studio and let you guys know what I think of them. The last thing I picked up was the Lone Guard faction from Relic Blade. I didn't have this one yet. There's a couple of the sculpts in this faction that I really like. They're just just the right amount of detail for models. And the game is super, super fun. So my friends and I have made a 2024 resolution to get our factions painted and to play some Relic Blade games because it's a great game to play co-op or against each other and even solo. And speaking of Relic Blade, they actually hosted a one hour speed paint competition at the convention, which I participated in. Since I had just picked up the Atom paints, I used those solely for my one hour speed paint. And this was a brand new model that was on the Kickstarter for Relic Blade. And I had so much fun doing this. I didn't worry too much about blending. It was just about experimenting with color, mixing colors on the palette, bringing up some vibrancy to bring all the details to life on this guy. And I had a blast. And in case you're wondering, yes, of course, I did win the speed paint competition, but it wasn't really about that. It wasn't as much of a competition as it was laughing with your fellow painters, just having some fun, painting as quickly as you can, realizing that the time is going faster than you possibly believed, and at the end, going home with a cool new mini. Today's video is brought to us by Ravage Star, the tabletop miniatures war game brought to us by Mini Wargaming and Lazy Squire Games. Last year, Ravage Star burst into the scene with their initial line of 32mm heroic scale plastic miniatures, and now they have a full fledged game ready to order, along with two new factions. Joining the Veil Touched are the Amari, the Dwarven Warriors, as well as my favorite faction, the Gorkog. The dwarves of the Amari system lost their entire civilian population to a Gorkog attack while their military, the engineers of war, were away aiding the vanguard. They now work to rebuild their civilization and extract vengeance on the vile Gorkog. A malevolent and grotesque army seemingly without end, the Gorkog served the will of Navir, the god of wrath. 
Navir has spent thousands of years collecting and perfecting his monstrous soldiers through breeding, experimentation, and gene splicing. What really impresses me about these two new factions are the sheer number of models available for you to try out right at launch. There's so many choices, so I don't have to wait to customize my army to the playstyle and aesthetic that I like. The Pledge Manager is now open, and they have some amazing deals on a wide variety of starter kits and individual units, so you can customize your force at a great price. So check out the link down in the video description and pick up the faction that speaks to you most. I know these deals aren't going to last, but these models in this game will. All right, let's talk about finishing the paint job for my Golden Demon entry. When we last left off, I had everything with paint on it. I had blue tacked the models on to see what the composition looked like and look for places to spend my final number of days trying to improve the piece to get ready for competition. What I did from there was got feedback on the piece from a number of painters that I consider friends that are also just happen to be amazing painters. We had the great Will Hahn, the wonderful Andy Wardle, of course, Vinci V himself, and the legend Darren Latham. Why this was so important is because I've spent so many hours on this piece, I'm kind of snowblind to it. There's a lot of things I don't know if they're good enough or if they're not good enough, where to spend my time and what already looks good. So getting feedback, getting suggestions from a variety of different people that you respect really can give you direction on where to spend the last amount of hours you have before the competition. Based on their feedback, here's a list of some of the things that I spent my time on improving in hopes of bringing home a demon. All right, on the dog, I actually darkened down his legs and his feet a bit. Because they were so light, it kind of felt like he was floating a bit for where he was standing on the rocks. So I just glazed in some more shadows there. Next, I decided to bring some more green tones into all the stones on the base because they were a little bit too grayish blue, which felt like they were similarly colored to the metallics, armor, and weapons across the piece, and I wanted to differentiate them a bit. I also spent a good bit of time reworking the face of the Cavalier Marshal to brighten it up, as well as that front right shoulder plate that he's got going on there. I wanted that to really be the focus to draw the attention along with his red cape to draw your eye up the piece and towards him. And I'm pretty happy with that. Although I must be honest with you, if I were to say the one thing that I'm least confident about in the paint job is the painting of his face. Unfortunately, I had already had him attached to the horse, so it was a lot harder to reach and access and really make sure that I could define those shapes as well as I wanted. I still think it looks good, but I think it could be better. I also extended some of the highlights on the horse's mane to give that a little bit more interest and actually free-handed some hairs on that mane with highlights because there was a lot of kind of gap points where there needed to be more hair and it wasn't sculpted, so I just did that with the brush. And speaking of the horse, I also deepened the shadows of its chest plate and its head armor to really sell the depth of that armor and really show the bright parts a little bit easier by creating more shadows. Now, after doing all of those improvements, I feel the piece still mostly looks the same, but it's probably three to 5% better, at least in my eyes. And those last couple of percent of improving is often the difference between getting a commended entry or getting a finalist pin or even notable. So doing all you can to schedule that time to really look back, improve, ask for help so you can work on that prior to the competition feels like a real winning strategy and I'll be doing that every year moving forward. All right, let's talk about my thoughts on the Golden Demon event as a whole. And I did receive a bronze trophy for this piece, meaning that I was third place. And there were two other amazing pieces in silver and gold, as well as two or three others that were in commended that I also thought were amazingly painted. As usual, I didn't know if I was going to place or not. It could have gone so many different ways. And I was just grateful to get any trophy at all because the competition was so stiff, especially in my category. So yes, getting grumpy about not getting a silver or a gold is ridiculous. These things are so hard to get. And every year that goes by, they seem to be further and further out of reach. I didn't think I would ever be able to to achieve this, so it doesn't matter to me what color this is. Just like if you entered and you got a finalist pin or a notable entry or a commended or whatever, 
Be proud, be excited, use that to drive yourself, to keep painting, to keep competing if that's what you want to do. Or maybe it's just to check it off your bucket list that you've done it and be proud of that. For now, I'm going to put it in a special place on my shelf and be happy to look at it and show it to anyone who wants to see and look back fondly on this entire process, especially sharing it with you as we got to go through the Golden Demon experience together. To be honest with you guys, I really wasn't expecting this series to do as well as it did in terms of views. Usually painting high level over multiple video series just don't perform very well. So your support and your enthusiasm has meant the world to me. This is really, really amazing, which makes me want to do more of this, but not anytime soon. I'm gonna take a little bit of a breather from high level stressful miniature painting, pushing myself to the limits of what I can achieve. I'm gonna focus on fun projects. I'm gonna focus on games I wanna play and painting for that. I'm gonna focus on awesome factions and new models that I've never painted before. I'm gonna try out weird products, new paints, all that kind of stuff because that excites me as well. Now, that being said, I had planned to either not think about Golden Demon at all, not do one at all next year, or at least give myself a minimum of three months before I even started considering painting for Golden Demon. And man, was I wrong. It's exciting to think about what you're gonna do bigger, better, more creative than ever. And I really appreciate that the judges this year seem to award creativity. So many of the pieces that did really well in their categories were really innovative, really creative, really creating something that didn't exist before, an idea that we hadn't seen. And that really interests me. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for going on this journey with me. I appreciate you being subscribed so you can go on next year's journey as well, whether we're painting weird and wild quick stuff or when we start to dig in again. And a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support has allowed me to do this big project and you've been even closer to me on the ride with my weekly Wednesday videos where we've been talking through a lot of the struggles I've had, how I've been thinking about things and how I worked through them. Now I'm gonna be back here again next week with another new video and sometime you now and then make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray yeah